much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. Well, first, we welcome back Fred and Mark. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the Pointless final, and this is your last chance. Remind us what happened. We got to the head-to-head. -head. We narrowly lost out by avoiding an obvious answer, trying for a more obscure answer, and sadly, it backfired on us. Ah, yes. This was the state of New Orleans. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes. Mark, what would you like to see come up this afternoon? A bit of sports, mm -hmm. a bit of music. Um... Any particular kind of music? What's your... 1980s music, Depeche right. Mode, Duran Duran, that kind of stuff. Now, what would you like to see come up this afternoon, friend? Anything pre-1970. Anything pre-1970. <laughs> well, very best of luck to the pair of you. It's lovely to have you back. Let's hope we'll see you all the way through to the final this time. Yes, and you. next, we welcome back Danny and Catherine. You were also both on the show last time. Now, remind us how you two know each other. Uh, we're brother and sister. Um, she's mm -hmm. my sister stroke babysitter so we're yeah. only live a couple of miles apart so we help each other out in things i'll do her diy she'll do my babysitting that's that sort pretty of thing. fair trade off how, how yeah. many children have you got danny just the one uh, sophia she's seven and she brought along her nibbles toy. needs no introduction to those who watched the last <laughs> show nibbles who helped catherine find a spectacular answer yeah. it did. it didn't, um, do, didn't do so well for didn't me. help me so much danny no. though poor old nibbles no. oh well we shouldn't expect too much from him but uh, catherine what would be what would be a great subject for you this afternoon well, I, I did a film degree um, a couple of years ago, so... Well, that should set you up for any, any cinema <laughs> questions. Absolutely anything from, you know, 1900 onwards, I think. But uh, maybe a Hitchcock um, question, perhaps. Very best of luck to the pair of you. It's great to have you. you back. Next, we welcome Patrick and John. Now, how do you two know each other? Patrick is my oldest brother. Very good. And what do you do, John? I'm a kitchen manager stroke chef. So it's a restaurant or a... Or a yeah, it's a or pub a, restaurant. It's a pub restaurant, yes. I see. Very good. How about you, Patrick? I'm a welder by trade, and uh, we make hydraulic rams. Very good. When you're not welding, Patrick, what are your, what are your interests? I play a lot of darts, a lot of football. Very so good. sport would be really nice. Sport would be great. <laughs> OK, very good. Well, it's great to have you here. Welcome to the show. Best of luck. And finally, we have Julie and Simon. How do you two know each other? Uh, Julie and I are partners. Met about a year and a half ago. Uh, playing Scrabble on the social networking site, and then as time progressed, we uh, we met each other, never looked back. Happy ne as Larry. Oh, fantastic! So it's it, it's proved a, a triple word score, has it? <laughs> Perfect, yes. Fantastic. Um, who who wins the Scrabble usually? <laughs> it's close. We're equally same. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That, well, thank goodness. Do you still play now? Now, yeah, now you're together. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you play on an actual board or do you still play on, Both. online? Both. <laughs> we play online on the same computer. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And uh, where have you come from? Guildford in Surrey. Guildford in Surrey. And what do you do, Julie? I'm a catering manager at a children's school. Very, wow, that's... Particularly now, after Jamie Oliver, that's quite a, that's quite a task, uh, It's isn't challenging. It? Yeah. The children seem to miss their chips a bit. <laughs> I, be I bet. And you have to insist that they eat, they eat yeah. more healthy things. Well, we're teaching them all about nutrition and healthy eating, and they're, they're really enjoying it and taking it on board. Oh, very good indeed. Well done. And Simon, how about you? I'm a careers advisor in the Royal Air Force. I've mm. uh, been doing human resources with them for 23 years. Well, welcome to the show, guys. Thank it's lovely you. to have you here. Um, we'll find out a bit more about all of you throughout the show. There's only one person left for me to introduce. If he were a doctor, he would be an encyclopediatrician. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, it really, bad. really was. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. I can. I can only apologise. That's okay. Uh, should be a good show today. We've got two returning pairs. Fred and Mark did very, very well last time. Danny and Catherine less so, but uh, I think they were slightly unlucky. And Mr Nibbles, of course, is, uh, is here to help them out as well. Uh, the first round today has got more correct answers than any round we've ever played on Pointless. Ever. And it should, uh, it should suit Julie and Simon, I think. Wow. But it's the sort of round where Julie and Simon could chat each other up, I think. <laughs> Very good. Well, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find 
a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £3,500. Right, let's play Pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. So try and avoid those. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Words. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in O-P-E as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any word that occurs in the Oxford English Dictionary online edition that ends with the letters O-P-E. As always, no hyphenated words will be allowed, no proper nouns, people's names, uh, names of places. But there are over 350 words ending O-P-E in the English language. See if you can get all of those at home. <laughs> Good luck with that. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Fred and Mark, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. So then, Fred. There are several that are quite obvious, but I'm going to take a chance on kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. Very good. Tactic being go for a very long word and hope people didn't think about that. Very good. Kaleidoscope. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said kaleidoscope. It's right. That's a spectacular answer, Fred. Lovely low score as well. Richard, can Yeah, I well played, Fred. Good start to the show. Um, an instrument with reflecting panels that, call, that uh, creates symmetrical patterns and what have you. So then, Danny. Danny, you haven't yeah. had terribly long to think about this, Not but really. be glad that people haven't been nicking all your ideas. Yeah. I haven't had much time, so I can only think of one or two. I'm going to say isotope. Isotope? Yeah. Oh, I have a feeling this might be a low-scoring round. Isotope, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said isotope. It's correct. <laughs> very, very well done, Danny. Six for isotope. <laughs> Richard. Uh, yeah, very well played, uh, Danny. Isotopes, they're, they're variations of chemical elements, isotopes. OK, so, Patrick and John, words ending in O-P-E. Patrick. The only thing, the only one I can think of, really... Well, there is a few, but I think I'm going to go for stethoscope. Stethoscope. Very good. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. We've had two, we've had six. No one in double figures yet. Let's see how many doctors there were in our hundred <laughs> people. Stethoscope, you're saying. Let's see if it's right. How many people said it? Only the best score so far. Stethoscope scores you one, Richard. Yeah, good answer, Patrick. A very low score, isn't it? Uh, obviously, you used to listen to internal sounds by doctors. And vets. And prefer. vets. Yeah. yeah. And safe crackers. Yeah, safe crackers as well. Julie, what yeah. is the most obscure word ending in O-P-E you can think of? Well, I, two of them have already gone, so um, I'm racking my brains. I'm going to go with horoscope. Horoscope? Well, let's see. Horoscope. As I say, they're all single figures. Let's see if we can keep it that way. Uh, let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said horoscope. Very well done, Judy. That's a great answer. Brilliant score as well. Two for horoscope. Yeah, a plan of the zodiac or an interpretation of it. Very good answers from everybody. Very well done. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at those scores. Patrick and John, brilliant answer there with stethoscope, one point. Then up to two for horoscope. Two, uh, Fred and Mark with kaleidoscope. And then Danny and Catherine. I mean, who would have thought six would have you way out in front? 
but you are way out in front. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for words ending with the letters O-P-E. Simon. OK, I've got a couple in mind. One's a little bit dangerous, and I think I'll just hold that back. So I'm going to stick with Periscope. OK, at the end of the round, I am longing to know what your dangerous word... I'll tell you if it doesn't come was. up. OK, there's your red line, Simon, <laughs> right down it. at the bottom. Below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. That's correct. <laughs> Periscope scores one. Takes your total up to three. Very well done. You are through to the next round. Yeah, Richard. well played, Simon. The low scores keep coming. Periscope, most commonly used on, uh, on a submarine, of course. And just to let you know, uh, Julie and Simon, uh, that Periscope would have scored 15 in, uh, in Scrabble, but Horoscope would have scored 16. So a victory for Julie. Thanks very much, Richard. So, John, we are looking for words that end in O-P-E. The high scorers are still Catherine and Danny on six. You're on one, which means if you can score four or less, you are definitely through to the next round. Well, words is definitely not strong for me. Um, I could play it safe, but I don't think that's going to get me very far. So I'm going to take a punt. I'm going to go with the word what I think exists, because I have heard it, so it must do. Elope. Elope. OK, elope. You have a red line. There it is, right down at the bottom. Let's see if elope can get you below that red line. Good luck. Thirty-five. It's right, but it's a big score there, John. That takes your total up to thirty-six, Richard. Yeah, that's a proper traditional point. This score, isn't it? Thirty-five yeah. uh, to elope, to run off, often to uh, to get married in secret. So then, Catherine, remember we are looking for words ending in O P E. You've been thrown a lifeline there. The high scorers on 36 are now John and Patrick. You are on six, which means if you can score 29 or less, you are through to the next round. What are you thinking? Well, um, I've got a couple of words in my head, but I think one's going to be too, um, too much high scoring. The other word I'm a bit unsure of, but I might as well gamble. So I'm going to say interlope. 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 Danny thinks that's a good answer. There is your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round. You've done it. You're through. Very well done indeed. Interlope. Two points. Richard. Yeah, very well played, Catherine. To intrude upon improperly. Interlope. So then, Mark and Fred. Mark, you are on two. The high scorers are John and Patrick on 36. If you can score 33 or less, you are through to the next round. Have you had lots of answers that other people have said? Yeah, I was, uh, I was hoping to elope, to be honest. Right. Microscope. OK, so microscope, you are saying there is your red line mark. Below that red line, you are through to the next round. Microscope, is it right? How many people said it? You're through to the next round. Well done. Two. The microscope. Very well done. That takes your total up to four. Microscope. Yeah, we had a lot of scopes in that round. They all scored very lowly. We had kaleidoscope, microscope, periscope, horoscope. All very low scores. There's only a lope that, uh, that went up into double figures there. There are huge amounts of, uh, of pointless answers here. Lots of scopes, in fact. There's conoscope, colonoscope, pedoscope, rhinoscope, seismoscope, scintilloscope, all sorts of scopes. We'll take a look at some of the other answers, though. Uh, allotrope, diamonds and coal are both allotropes of carbon. Dispope, we need to get rid of a pope. There's mishope, which is despair. Bridelope, which is the, is, is the oldest version of the word wedding they can find in the OED, the oldest thing that refers to a wedding. Cardioscope, oscilloscope, obviously both um, medical instruments. Camiprosope, which is a, a type of skull. Uh, a coniscope and a, a philanthrope. What was your dangerous one, Simon? It wasn't there, it was endoscope. <sighs> can be pretty dangerous in the wrong hand, certainly. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah end endoscope would have scored two. Would have gone with all those other uh, all those all those other scopes. Let's take a look at the, uh, the the biggest answers. These are the ones that most of our hundred said. Uh, it wasn't all ones and twos. Cope sixty seven. Dope sixty eight. And top of them all, hope on eighty seven. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid. <laughs> It's Patrick and John. Well, you, you, you did phenomenally well. It's just uh, everyone else did much, much better. <laughs> I don't know. It seems very harsh to be sending you home on just 36. But there we are. That's what we have to do. You are the high scorers. But thanks very much, Blaine. Great contestants. We'll see you again next time. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. Make sure it's not you. Our category for round two this afternoon is TV characters. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Yeah, okay. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, our round two question this afternoon concerns TV characters and their jobs. We're going to show you six TV characters on each pass. We asked 100 people with which profession are they most closely associated. The more obscure answers will score you fewer points, but if you give us an incorrect answer, you're going to score 100 points. There's 12 in all for you to have a go at home, so good luck. Thanks very much, Richard. So we are looking for the jobs most closely associated with these TV characters, and here we go. We have got Josiah Jed Bartlett, Jack Sugden, Seymour Skinner, Simon Casey, James Herriot, Ali McBeal. I'll read those one more time. Josiah Jed Bartlett, Jack Sugden, Seymour Skinner, Simon Casey, James Herriot, Ali McBeal. There they are. There are the six TV characters. We want to find the jobs most closely associated with them. Fred. Right. There are a couple on there that uh, I think I know, so I'm going to have to go for, for me, which is obvious, and that's James Herriot's event. James Herriot, vet, you are saying. There he is, one up from the bottom. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. James Herriot, vet. It's right. 62. It's right, but it's a high score. 62 for vet, Richard. Yeah, big score, Fred, but better safe than sorry. Uh, it's from All Creatures Great and Small, of course, played by uh, Christopher Timothy. So, Danny. Danny, how's that board looking to you? I can... Three or four are uh, starting to set off. See, the, the wheels are turning, but the hamster's dead. <laughs> so... Blimey! <laughs> I'm going to say Seymour Skinner, uh, principal. Or headmaster, principal. Seymour Skinner, School principal. principal. Yeah. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said Seymour Skinner head or principal. That's correct. Very well done. 21. 21 for Seymour Skinner. Yeah, very well done, Danny. Seymour Skinner's principal of uh, Springfield Elementary in the, uh, in the Simpsons course. Julie. So remember, we are looking for the jobs that are most closely associated with these TV characters. You're the last person to have this board. So talk us through the board, if you like, and fill in any gaps, and then pick one to submit. Well, I don't actually watch any soaps or series, so I'm not very good. I can only... I've heard of Ali McBeal, but I can't tell you what she's in. And the only thing I can think of is Jack Sugden. I think he was in Emmerdale as a farmer, but I don't know for sure, but that's my answer, farmer. Jack Sugden. Farmer is your answer. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Jack Sugden, Farmer. That's right. <laughs> Jack Sugden, Farmer. Yeah, well, yeah, he was indeed. Well played, Judy. That's some good damage limitation there. As a, a farmer in Emmerdale, as you, as you rightly said. Uh, let's fill in the rest of the board. Ali McBeal, she was a lawyer in the, uh, in the series of the same name. Would have scored you 49. Uh, Josiah Jed Bartlett is, uh, is the president in the West Wing. Would have scored you two points. There's a pointless answer there. Simon Casey, any idea? It's tough. Anybody? He's uh, it's played by Andrew Lincoln in, uh, in Teachers. As a teacher. 
pointless answer. Very, very well done if you said that at home. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. Let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. 21, a great score there for Danny and Catherine. Keep that up, Catherine. You should be through to the head-to-head. -head. Then we go up to 51, where we find Julie and Simon. And then on to 62, where Fred and Mark are at the top of the table. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put six more TV characters on the board, and here we go. We have got Peggy Mitchell, Harold Steptoe, Patrick Clifton, Edina Monsoon, Monica Geller, Mitch Buchanan. I'll read those one more time. Peggy Mitchell, Harold Steptoe, Patrick Clifton, Edina Monsoon, Monica Geller, Mitch Buchanan. Now, remember, you are looking for the profession most closely associated with these TV characters. And obviously, you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Simon and Julie. Right. Um, I recognise five of the names, but I'm a bit unsure what a couple of the professions are. So I'm going to go with Mitch Buchanan, who I believe is a lifeguard. Mitch Buchanan, lifeguard, you're saying? Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line. Below that red line, you are definitely in the head to head. It's correct. Very, very nearly. Well done. 16, that scores you. Takes your total up to 67. Yeah, Mitch Buchanan, played by David Hasselhoff, of course, in Baywatch. It's the, the most uh, watched series in TV history. Seen regularly in over 148 countries. Catherine. So remember, we are looking for the jobs most closely associated with these TV characters. The high scorers on 67 are Simon and Julie, which means if you can score 45 or less, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. I think I'm going to go for Monica Geller, and she's a chef. Monica Geller, chef, you yep. are saying. Here's your red line. Quite nice and high. If Monica Geller can get you below that red line, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Best of luck. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Monica Geller, chef. That's right. Well done, you've done it. 40. Takes your total up to 61. Richard? Uh, yeah, very well played, Catherine. Very close round, but you're through. Yeah, played by Courtney Cox, of course, in Friends. Now then, Mark, this is the moment of truth. You are on 62. The high scorers on 67 are Simon and Julie. That means you have to score four or less. Yeah, it's got to be obscure. There's no point going, going safe, is there? And I don't... I don't actually think this is right. I'm going to go for Edina because I'm, I'm just thinking if that's the woman. The marketing advertising woman are absolutely fabulous. What, what are you going to describe her, her job as? Advertising. Advertising. Let's see if that's right. Advertising. Here's your red line coming in. It's going to be low, I warn you. If you get below that red line, you're in the head-to-head. -head. You are saying advertising. Let's see if that is right for Edina Monsoon. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Advertising. Best of luck, Mark. Bad luck. I'm afraid advertising is an incorrect answer. You did exactly the right thing there. But it was a very, very hard one to call. And uh, that scores you the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to 162. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Mark, very unlucky. Two further bits of bad news for you. It, it is the woman you're thinking of. It's Jennifer Saunders' character in Absolutely Fabulous. She's actually in PR. She's a public relations woman. Would have scored you five points. Would have seen you in a tie. Uh, so sorry about that. Five points, PR. Let's go through the rest of the board. Peggy Mitchell is a pub landlady in EastEnders, played by Barbara Windsor, 61. Harold Steptoe was uh, Steptoe and son, of course. He was a rag and bone man. 56. Now, Patrick Clifton is a pointless answer. And if you've got this at home, I take my hat off to you. So, Patrick Clifton, I'll tell you something. There is a clue in the name. Pat. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. If anyone got this at home, well done. Patrick Clifton is the real full name of Postman Pat. <laughs> oh. Postman Pat's full name. <laughs> that's, a, and it's, that's a pointless answer. That's good, isn't it? Did you that is that? brilliant. <laughs> well... Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, Fred and Mark. Very bad luck there, Mark. You were on the right... Do you know, I was it's trying a fine to think... line, isn't it? Fine I couldn't line. think what her career was either. Yeah. But, though, you go home knowing that Patrick Clifton is Postman <laughs> Pat's real name. So, in many ways, we're all winners. Absolutely. Uh, 
Well, I'm really sorry that we didn't get to see more of you, Fred and Mark. It's been brilliant having you on the show. Thanks so much for playing. Great contestants. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Very well done, Danny and Catherine, Julie and Simon. You've made it through to our head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £3,500. <laughs> Now, you're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to get to the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many First Ministers of Scotland as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any MSP who's held the position of First Minister of the Scottish Parliament up to the beginning of April 2011. We're not looking for acting First Ministers, just uh, anyone who's held the post permanently. There are four names on that list, so you can get all of those at home. Now, Danny and Catherine, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. We are looking for First Ministers of Scotland. We have an answer. I can see his name, uh, well, I can see his face, and I think he's called Alex Salmond. Alex Salmond. OK, Alex Salmond. We have Alex Salmond. Julie and Simon. Yeah. Did I just take a word out of your mouth there? <laughs> yes, which one we knew, yeah. OK. Um, so, time for a logical guess. Go for common name. Uh, Alan Smith. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we have Alex Salmond and that other famous AS, Alan Smith. Uh, in the order they were given, Danny and Catherine said Alex Salmond. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Alex Salmond. Right. 40. And let's see how our last-minute candidate, Alan Smith, does against the might of Alex Salmond. Alan Smith, is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? Alan Smith. Bad luck. I think we probably were expecting that, weren't we? Yes, yeah, so after the first question, Danny and Catherine are ahead 1-0. Richard. Uh, yeah, there are two English football players called Alan Smith, but no First Ministers of Scotland. There are currently hundreds of thousands of Scottish viewers screaming at their TVs. Let's uh, take a look at all the answers. Alex Salmond's from the SNP, of course. The other three are Labour, would have scored you far less. Henry McLeish, a very short serving, would have scored you three points. Jack McConnell would have scored you four. Uh, the first First Minister, Donald Dewar, seven. And Alex Salmond right at the top there on 40. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Here is your second question. Julie and Simon, you have to win this question to stay in the game. Good luck. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many artists with 10 or more UK number one singles as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any act that's had 10 or more UK number one singles just under their own name. There are five acts on this list, but for example, we wouldn't accept Cliff Richard because he's had a few by himself, but uh, to get over the 10, you'd have to count ones with the shadows. So it's the five acts who've had 10 or more UK number one singles by themselves. And that's as at the beginning of April 2011, please. OK. Julian Simon, you go first this time. OK. We're going to try Westlife. Westlife, mm. you're saying? OK, thank you very much. Now, Danny and Catherine, you can confer out loud. Well, the obvious ones are Beatles. Yeah. Um, uh, Elvis ones. Presley, maybe. Take that. Take that. I don't know if they had as many as ten. Spice Girls. I think they no, but I, I know, but I think in the 60s, early 70s, they had every single one after the other was number one. I think that was the Rolling Stones. So I'm going to say the Rolling Stones. Yeah, Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. OK, we have Westlife, we have the Rolling Stones. In the order they've been given, Julie and Simon have said Westlife. You have to win this point, Julie and Simon, to stay in the game. Westlife, is it right? How many people said it? That's right. Very well done. 16. <laughs> 16 for Westlife. 
The Rolling Stones. Is it going to beat Westlife? Let's find out. How many people said The Rolling Stones? Is it a right answer? Ooh. How bizarre. Who'd have thought The Rolling Stones would be an incorrect now. answer <laughs> for that? Wow. So, after our second question, you are absolutely even. One all, Richard. Uh, yeah, The Rolling Stones have had eight number one singles, and uh, Westlife have had 13. It's good, isn't it? Let's take a look at all five acts. Let's see if anybody got all five of them. Uh, there's Westlife, would have scored you 16 points. Elvis, of course, with 18. Madonna, 30. Take That Do Make It onto the list with 32. And The Beatles, right up the top with 42. Well done if you got all of those. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, here is your third question. This will decide who wins and goes on to the final. Right, here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many landlocked countries in Africa as they could. Yeah, simply looking for any country in Africa without a coastline. As always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that is a member of the UN. Danny and Catherine, you get to go first again this time. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping it's landlocked. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, Julie and Simon. Sierra Leone has gone. Going to go for the Democratic Republic of Congo. OK, you're going to go for Congo. Democratic Republic thereof. <laughs> In the order they were given, Danny and Catherine, Sierra Leone. Is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? Oh. Bad luck. Bad luck. Julie and Simon have gone for Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> this just has to be right. Let's see if it is right. And how many people said it? Oh. Right, OK. Time for a geography lesson for everyone, I think, <laughs> probably. Um, so, after three questions, you are still one all. Richard? Yeah, both on the uh, west coast of Africa, those countries. There's a huge amount of countries on the list, though. Let's take a look through them. Uh, any of these would have seen either of you through to the final. Burkina Faso on four, Swaziland, Central African Republic and Burundi on five. Lesotho on seven. Rwanda, Malawi and Ethiopia all on nine. Zambia, ten. Niger, twelve. There's more. Uh, Mali, 13. Chad, 14. Uganda and Botswana, 15. And Zimbabwe right at the top on 17. So a lot of answers there. Well done if you got one of them. So here it is. Here is your fourth question. Bit of a rarity in the head-to-head, -head, a fourth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many of the last 10 Bond films as they could. The last 10 Bond films. Yeah, we're looking for any of the last 10 official James Bond films made for cinema release prior to April 2011, please. Those are the official feature films made by E.ON. OK, thanks very much. Julian Simon, you start this time. OK, we ran through a few. Uh, the one we're going for is Tomorrow Never Dies. Tomorrow Never Dies. Danny and Catherine. Well, we were also going to go for <laughs> Tomorrow Never Dies. Hang on, hang on. I would go for World Is Not Enough. Not Golden, yeah. not Golden Eye. No, Golden Eye was, no, that was in the 60s, that was, the, that was, um... No, Golden Eye was, uh, was, uh, Pierce Brosnan's first one. Was it? Yeah, was I. No, I think we'll go for World Is Not Enough. Right. She's, yeah. She saved the day today, so we're going to go with Catherine's and I'll let her say it. Uh, the world is not enough. Yeah. The world is not enough. OK. We have Tomorrow Never Dies. We have The World is Not Enough. This will decide who goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. In the order they've been given, Julie and Simon, Tomorrow Never Dies. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. That's right. Fourteen. Fourteen. For tomorrow never dies. Is that enough, do you think? I think it's going to be close. <laughs> the world is not enough. Is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? The world is not enough. The world is not enough. 13. Fantastic. Oh, you said it was going to be close, Simon. Boy, was it close. 
Well, so after our fourth question, Danny and Catherine are through to the final 2-1. Richard. <laughs> yeah, tough luck, Julian Simon. And well played, Catherine. Not only did you come up with, the, with a very good answer, but when your brother, your older brother at that, tried to talk you out of it, you stuck by your guns yeah. and it proved yeah. to be the right I thing. Because if you'd said Goldeneye, you'd be going home no. because it would have scored more. Let's take a look at all the answers, the last ten films. There were a few answers that would have won this for you. Um, License to Kill, six. Octopussy, seven. Living Daylights, eight. Uh, there's a view to a kill 11. All of those would have seen you through to the final. Uh, the world is not enough on 13. There's 14 for Tomorrow Never Dies. Then Die Another Day, 23. Quantum of Solace, 28, along with Goldeneye, Danny's answer, 28 as well. And right at the top of the list, Casino Royale on 44. Thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Julian Simon. Well, you've done incredibly well. Incredibly well. Alan Smith. If, uh, if you're thinking of standing for the Scottish Parliament, Alan, why not? Give it a whirl, give it a whirl. I know two people who'd vote for you if they lived there. <laughs> well, the good news is we will see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. You're, you've been fantastic contestants. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> but for Danny and Catherine, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £3,500. <laughs> Congratulations, Danny and Catherine. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £3,500. There it is. The rules are very simple. All you have to do to win that money is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we've had no pointless answers on the show today. You only have to find one now and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category and you can choose from these three options. They are classical music, cricket, education. Got to go for cricket. Well, go well, I, don't, well I don't know any cricketers whatsoever okay. or... Well, I don't know any classical any musicians to do with cricket. or teachers. No. Go for cricket, please, uh, Alexander. <laughs> so it's, it's just know. Danny and Nibbles on this one, then? It is, uh, it is. OK. <laughs> cricket. OK, well, very, very best of luck to all three of you. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many England cricketers who were not born in England as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any cricketer who's represented England in a one-day international or test match since 1980 up to the beginning of April 2011 who was not born in England. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that £3,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Over to you. Well, I can only think of... Papara. But whether he was born in England, I don't know. You've got Matt Pryor. Uh, most of the ones I'm thinking of are probably English, like Collingwood, uh, Flintoff, all that uh, sort Ian of thing. Uh, Ian Botham's definitely English. He's definitely, he's definitely English. So it's going to be probably Bapara. Ian Bell, is he, is he Irish? Or um, South, Africa, uh, South African? Ian Bell, Pryor. Ronnie Bapara. Yeah. Graham Swan's English. So it'll be Rani Bapara, uh, yeah. Tendul, because obviously Indian, isn't he? Matt Pryor, Ian Bell. Kevin Peterson's obviously South African, but that'll be too obvious. So, all right, we'll have to go for that then. We'll have to go for Ian Bell and... Ian Five Bell, seconds left. Matt Pryor and Rani Bapara. Right. OK, there is your minute up. That's your time. We were looking for England cricketers not born in England. I now need your three answers. Rani Bapara, Ian Bell, Matt Pryor. OK. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? I've got a feeling Matt Pryor's Irish or something, so I'll say Matt Pryor. Matt Pryor will put him last. Who do you want to put first? Ian, Ian Bell's probably Ian more Bell. English than I am, so... OK, well, here are the three answers you've given in the order you have prescribed, and they are Ian Bell, Ronnie Bapara, and Matt Pryor. OK, we were looking for England cricketers not born in England. This was your least confident answer. You only need to find one pointless answer to win that £3,500 jackpot. Let's see if Ian Bell is right. Now, where do you think Ian Bell might have been born? 
one of many uh, South Africans. Hopefully he was born in Scotland and then moved to England when he was five or something. OK, well, let's see if it's right. Ian Bell, is that right? And if it is, how many people said it? Ian Bell, good luck. Bad luck. Ian Bell, England, born and bred. Unfortunately, not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. So your second answer, you went with Ronnie Bapara. We're looking for England cricketers not born in England. This is your second shot at that jackpot, £3,500. What would you do with £3,500? Well, uh, probably, well, Catherine's car new recently car. broke, so I'll get her a new car. Yeah, a new car. Maybe a mini holi a holiday, perhaps, something like that. Weekend away. So I thought that was the car you were going to get, a mini holiday. I think that's it. <laughs> OK, well, here we go. Your second answer, you said Ronnie Bapara. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Bad luck. I'm afraid so you only have nice. one more chance to win today's jackpot. Everything is now resting on Matt Pryor. Matt Pryor, we're looking for England cricketers not born in England. You said this was the answer you had the most faith in to be pointless. This has to be pointless if you're going to win that jackpot. £3,500. Matt Pryor, is it right? How many people said it? It's right. Matt Pryor, not born in England. He's in the right place on the board. It's going down into the 30s, into the 20s. If this goes all the way down to zero, you are leaving here with £3,500. Oh! Oh, that was very exciting. <laughs> very it exciting. Was right. It was right. right. It was right. It was very right. Unfortunately, though, you didn't find that all-important pointless answer, I'm afraid, so you don't win today's jackpot of £3,500. But you have been fantastic contestants, and you do, of course, get to take home our fabulous pointless trophy. So well done. <laughs> oh, Richard. Yeah, very unlucky, Richard. especially at the end there. Matt Pryor, of course, born in, uh, born in South Africa. Ravi Bapara, and he was born in Newham in London, so uh, wouldn't have counted anyway. And Ian Bell was born in the exotic climes of Coventry. <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, there's loads and loads of pointless answers. Loads of 80s players like Devon Malcolm, Robin Smith, uh, Gladstone Small, Derek Pringle, uh, a couple of Welsh players, Simon Jones and Robert Croft, Ed Joyce from Ireland. Let's look at a few. There's Derek Pringle and Gladstone Small, Dougie Brown, who was, uh, who was born in Scotland, played one day cricket for England, O.A. Shah, Simon Jones, Roland Butcher, the, uh, the batsman, Robin Jackman, Phil Edmonds, spin bowler, Martin McCaig. Very well done if you've got any of them at home. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Danny and Catherine, but it's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Great contestants. Thank you. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be paying for £4,500. Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>